Hello everyone, welcome to this sixth video on set theory which will deal about properties of relation. In last session we saw about what is meant by a Cartesian product. How a subset of a Cartesian product can be called as a relation if it is going to satisfy any particular criteria or condition. <coughs> we saw about the different operations that can be performed on a relation. Now we will see the different properties of a relation in this video. First moving on, the reflexive relation. A relation R on a set A is called to be reflexive if A comma B belongs to the relation holds true for every element A belonging to capital A. So if I have the set A comma B, I need the collection of pass A comma A. So I will have A comma A and I will have B comma B to be put inside a bracket and I can call this relation R to be a reflexive relation. So if I am going to have the set 1, 2, 3, what will be the reflexive relation of this? The set 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3 will be the reflexive relation on this set called as A. Next, irreflexive relation. A relation R on a set A is called to be irreflexive if no a comma a is going to be a part of the relation for the set a a comma b i have a comma b and b comma a alone but i don't have the elements a a or b b to be a part of this r therefore i call this r to be irreflexive so if it does not contain any element of the nature a comma a then you call it to be irreflexive Next, symmetric relation. A relation R on a set A is called to be symmetric if B comma A belongs to R holds true whenever A comma B belongs to R. That is, A comma B belongs to the relation will imply to me B comma A also belongs to the relation. So, if I have a relation of the kind 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, 5, 5, 6, which has been defined on the set called as 4, 5, 6. Can I call it to be symmetric? Let us verify. I have a 4, 5. If I have a 4, 5, then 5, 4 must also be inside. Is 5, 4 inside? Yes, it's inside. If 5, 4 is inside, it's B, comma A must also be inside. Is it inside? Yes, it's inside. If 6, comma 5 is inside the set, it's flip. 5 comma 6 must also be there inside. Is it here? Yes. If 5 comma 6 is present, it's flip 6 comma 5 must also be present. So all the possible combinations are here. Hence I call the set to be symmetric. What is asymmetric relation? It is going to be the opposite of your symmetric relation. If it is going to contain no b comma a when a comma b is there, then you call it to be asymmetric relation. Next we call about transitive relation. A relation R on a set A is said to be transitive if A comma B belonging to R and B comma C belonging to R implies A comma C belongs to R. That is A comma B belongs to R and your B comma C also belongs to R then your A comma C belongs to R. It's like a triad. A, B, then B to C, then I can go from the ordered pair AC. Next, anti-symmetric relation. A relation R on a set A is said to be anti-symmetric if A comma B belongs to the relation R and B comma A belongs to the relation R, then A has to be equal to B. Otherwise, it is not antisymmetric. That is, if A is not equal to B, you call it to be not antisymmetric. Okay. So, what is the criteria here? A comma B belongs to the relation R and B comma A also belongs to the relation R implies A equal to B. So, the most frequently used relations will be your reflexivity your symmetricity, your transitivity and anti-symmetry because 
we will be making use of them to define the next set of relation called as equivalence and partial ordering what is meant by an equivalence relation a relation that is reflexive symmetric and transitive is called as equivalence relation that is whenever i have the set of a comma a to belongs to r you call it to be reflexive whenever we have the set a comma b belong to r to imply b comma a also belongs to r then you call it to be symmetric what is transitive a comma b belonging to r and your b comma c belonging to r implies a comma c belongs to r is called as transitivity if all the three are satisfied then you call the relation as an equivalence relation now let us check if the given relation a 1 2 3 the set a 1 2 3 and the relation r defined here is going to be an equivalence relation first for reflexivity what is reflexive a comma a must be that 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 are they here yes 1 1 2 2 3 3 they are there inside next whenever a b is inside b a must also be there inside 1 2 balance to 1 2 3 inverse 3 2 1 3 flipped gives 3 1 all of them are inside so it is symmetric in nature the next one is transitivity whenever i take 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 i also find their end elements which is 1 comma 1 to be inside whenever i take 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 their end elements 2 comma 3 is also inside whenever i take 3 comma 2 3 comma and 2 comma 1 what happens this 3 comma 1 is also inside so whenever i check for the triad a comma b and b comma c a comma c is also inside so the relation is called as transitive relation next moving on to partial ordering what is partial ordering relation a relation that is going to be reflexive anti-symmetric and transitive is called as partial ordering relation or partial order relation it is also referred by the name po set a set that is going to satisfy partial order relation is called as po set any set satisfying a partial order relation is called as po set so the main difference over here is it is not symmetric but anti-symmetric the relation greater than or equal to defined on the set of integers is going to be in partial ordering why can we say so we know that a is greater than or equal to a for any integer therefore equality holds hence it is reflexive whenever a integer is greater than or equal to b and b is greater than or equal to a we notice that the integers are one and the same so a comma b belongs to the relation and b comma a belonging to the relation implies a equal to b which means it is anti-symmetry next if a is greater than or equal to b the integer and the integer b is greater than or equal to c we notice that the integer a is obviously greater than or equal to c so the relation is transitive as we know this a comma b belong to relation and b comma c belong to the relation will imply a comma c belongs to the relation hence the relation of greater than or equal to is going to be considered as a partial order relation similarly the relation less than or equal to can also be on the set of integers can also be showed on as a partial order relation similarly we can say the relation of subset of 
so i call a to be a subset of b the subset of can also be this is going to be on the set on defined on sets okay this is defined on set of integers this is defined on sets themselves can also be proved to be an partial order relation okay so these are the various way the relations can be classified according to their properties to move on to more example we can say that let us have a line called as a which is going to be perpendicular to the line called as b perpendicular line if a is perpendicular to b what can we say about the relation of b with respect to a b to a is also perpendicular if a is perpendicular to b then b is perpendicular to a a comma b belongs to the relation implies b comma a also belongs to the relation therefore this relation is going to be symmetric this relation is going to be symmetric next i have a line a and i have a line b which is going to be parallel to one another if a is parallel to b i can also find b to be parallel to a that is a comma b belongs to the relation implies b comma a also belongs to the relation so the relation of parallel is also symmetric in nature now let me have a third line called as c here now a is parallel to b b is parallel to c and i notice that a is also parallel to c that is a parallel to b and b parallel to c implies a parallel to c hence this relation is called as transitive relation so you have triad here now can the property of perpendicularity be transitive in nature now i know a is perpendicular to b let me draw a line c which is going to be perpendicular to c so i have a c which is perpendicular to b now i have a perpendicular to b and b is perpendicular to c is a perpendicular to c i notice that the lines a and c are rather parallel but they are not perpendicular so a is not perpendicular to c therefore i don't have this perpendicularity relation to be transitive in nature so these example will quite help you to understand the nature how these symmetric transitivity anti symmetry and so on works i hope this video was helpful to you happy learning